Hello everyone. After having just finished Claire, I wanted to come back and do a review on it. So Claire is a survival horror game from Hailstorm Games. The closest thing I could compare it to would be Lone Survivor, which it has a lot of similarities with. Which is quite a good thing, because Lone Survivor was pretty damn great. So early on, everything is going fairly normally. You're in the hospital visiting your mother. Nothing particularly creepy has happened yet. And then everything starts to get messed up. You get lost, the hospital starts to change, you don't know where the hell exactly you are anymore. And your environment becomes very twisted indeed, as you can probably see around me. Scribblings on the wall, everything's dirty and grimy and sludge and blood and... Ugh, it just gets really nasty. So at that point, and your main mission throughout, throughout the game is basically just to find out what the hell is going on and how you can escape. I mean, really, just what is going on? You know, why are you here? What's happened? And one of the things I like most about this game is the atmosphere. The sense of atmosphere is really good. For one, just looking at the art, uh, the art's really good. It's really some excellent pixel art. And there's even some really, uh, there's really some great looking effects that are mixed in with the the basic 2D art. It's kind of a mix of, of basic 2D art with more advanced effects. So, for example, look at these candles. There's, well, there's particle emitters. There's particles coming from them. And check out these lighting effects. If you take out your flashlight, you can actually move this around with your mouse. So you can aim your flashlight, and it's got dynamic lighting for that. It's very cool looking. The lighting's great. The art is really good. It's got some excellent animations as well. Like, where you aim your flashlight will have a, a different animation. You see she's aiming it in all sorts of different areas, looking and moving the flashlight to the appropriate spot. It's really impressive. Very cool. It's a very dark game, literally speaking and figuratively. So you have this lighter here that has unlimited fuel and just provides a small light source around you. Then you also have this flashlight, which is obviously better, but... You do have batteries, which run down very, very quickly, so the vast majority of the time you're going to be using your lighter. So it's pretty challenging to see stuff comfortably. I mean, it's easy enough to see where you're where you're going and kind of what you're looking at, but being able to see what you're looking at and being comfortable with your environment are two different things. There's a lot of shadows and a lot of things that'll make your skin crawl, and you're going to want to take out your flashlight probably quite a bit. Because it's damn creepy. So yeah, excellent pixel art, some really good animations. The lighting is really cool. There's some nice advanced effects with the lighting and particle emitters and stuff like that. And the sound design is also quite good. I would like to find an example. Okay, here's a good example. There's some creepy sounds coming from over here, and it it's hurt my sanity quite a bit. Actually, I'm horrified, which is the worst sanity you can have. And it's making everything weird. Yeah, there you go. Sound of children laughing. It's wonderful. And all sorts of other joyous things. And I believe it's in here. Yeah, here we go. And this is the complete antithesis of that, I suppose. It's a place of calm instead of a place of horror. You hear the uh, happy theme song from that bear-themed <laughs> show on TV. Whatever the hell it's called. And uh, something really cool about the sound design is how... Uh, it's positional. So the theme song is, it actually pans left and right depending on how close you are from the sound source. Dependent on not your camera, but your character. So right now you can hear that the theme song is coming from the right. And then as you move closer, it ends up coming from the center. So there's some really cool dynamic sound. It's quite nice. Oh god, my, yeah, my sanity is starting to go again. I think I should... Oh, I'm horrified. Oh, I'm scared. Okay, went from horrified to scared. Let's go somewhere. Uh, where should I go? Let's go to the... No, actually, I can't go to the right. Uh, let's go to the left. Let's take my flashlight out so I stop freaking out. By the way, my flashlight just got brighter there because I changed the batteries. So as the batteries go down, you, the uh, brightness of your light actually goes down as well. And then as soon as you put a fresh, fresh batch in them, it becomes very bright. 
pretty cool little detail. There's quite a few other cool details too, like if you leave your character idle for a while, uh, she'll actually, and your dog as well, will do this thing that she's about to do in a second, right about now. There we go. She'll go down, pull her hoodie over, and kind of just take a nap and rest for a minute. Along with your dog, Anubis. Pretty cool little detail. Now, let's talk about navigation in this game. It's a very important thing. So you're going to be bringing up your map a lot. This, uh, what? Actually, I probably shouldn't be in this room. I'm going to start freaking out again. Yeah. Let's stay in this one. So you're going to be pulling this open a lot. That is my location right there. A little white dot. And this is everywhere you can go. All the green rooms are rooms that I've already been to. The red marks indicate that, uh, like it says here on the legend, indicates a blocked door, and so on and so on. You know, that indicates a person, that's a save point, blocked doors. Stuff like that. And, honestly, um, navigation in this game is extremely, extremely difficult and annoying and frustrating. It really was for me. And a lot of that is down to the fact that you can only navigate the world in 2D. However, you're navigating a 3D world in two dimensions. It's weird. I'm pretty sure Lone Survivor had a similar problem. So here's what I mean. Look at this little, uh, this little section I'm in. It goes from top to bottom. However, if as soon as I take away the map, of course, since I'm operating in two dimensions, I can only go left or right. So even though the map is showing me going up and down, my actual movement in the world is left to right. So then it be it becomes very confusing. It's like where the hell is up and which what's down? I think left is so you un you end up having to move and then check your map. Like okay, I'm at the bottom. Go to the left. Okay, now I'm at the top of the room. So left is up. And then you go into here, for example. And now, okay, now left actually means left. There we go. And now right, now right means going up, whereas before left meant going up. It becomes quite difficult to navigate, and as you can see here, there's a lot of rooms, a lot of doors. And this is not even as bad as it gets, actually. There's another section of this hospital that has an obscene amount of doors and rooms. It is ridiculous how many freaking rooms are in there. So navigating becomes quite difficult. And you're gonna have you're gonna have your nose in your map all the time. It becomes very frustrating and frankly it becomes a chore. It became really annoying to navigate around. Especially because you do encounter enemies throughout the world. As you traverse the world you will find enemies and they will attack you and they will do damage. You know I have health here. Right now my health is fair, and you can take various items to heal your health, such as this green tea. There's other things like caffeine pills and candy and whatnot and energy drinks. Or actually soda. Yeah, they're soda, not energy drinks. So you are going to take damage. So you're navigating through a world that's very unintuitive to navigate because, again, you're moving in two dimensions, but you're actually moving through a 3D world. And it has a lot of doors. And you're going to be running from enemies sometimes while doing so, oftentimes, especially later in the game. And, by the way, have I mentioned that when you open up the map, it doesn't pause the game? So you're not going to be opening your map while you're running away. You're going to run away, get completely lost, and then open your map and go, where the hell am I? And it also doesn't help that the markings on the map are quite frequently not in the right area. If you notice, the uh, red thing here that indicates a blocked door is not actually on the door. That one's not on the door. These, I don't, I don't even know what's going on here. There's like two blocked doors here, even though there's only one door. It's really weird. There's quite a few map errors where what it shows you isn't exactly accurate. And in some areas, it can be hard to tell where you can move to another region. Like these black arrows indicate you can move to a different map if you go through there. In fact, can I go through it right now? Oh god, that's a monster. Okay, I'm safe now. <laughs> uh, yeah, if I go to the end of that hallway, I can probably go to a new spot. You know what? What the hell? Let me show you the monsters while I'm doing that. Let's sprint past it. Alright, here we go. Get away for- Oh god, there's another one. Okay. I can't sprint yet. I can't sprint yet. Hold on. Okay. Am I in a new area? Yes. Yes, I am. 
By the way, they will bust down doors. They will bust down doors to get to you. So if you only move one room away, there's a pretty good chance they're going to bust through it to get to you. If you move two rooms away, however, they don't. They've lost track of you. So, yeah, navigating is quite hard. I mean, already, just look at this. I just came from a couple doors away. If I wanted to get back to where I came from, where do I go? It's like, does it go into the right mean right? Okay, right does actually mean right. I go through here, and then I think I go through here to get to get back to where I just was. Like, is that where I came from? I'm frankly not quite sure. And there's a blocked mark on the map, which should indicate that I can't even go that way, so I'm actually confused. Even though I finished the game already, I'm actually confused. I actually don't know exactly where I came from. So navigation is really tedious. It's frustrating. You're going to have your nose in your map all the time. And it's made harder by the fact that the map is quite often not perfectly accurate. And opening the map doesn't pause the game. And you're going to be running away from enemies all the time. And you're navigating in two dimensions in a 3D world. So it's pretty awkward. It can get pretty annoying. Now, let's talk about the puzzles. And while doing that, let's go somewhere else, where there's hopefully not monsters. There's monsters. Not there, not there. Somewhere else. Yeah, your dog makes noise uh, when monsters are nearby. How about here? Is this, this safe? This seems safe. Here, let me just show another navigation thing. It's really hard to tell where you're going to actually go. So, okay, I'm in a room with three doors, right? Open up the map. And... The question on my mind as I open up this map is, where is this door going to take me? If I look at my spot here, you cannot zoom in or out, by the way. Look at my spot on the map, you can't see anything. It's such a small room that I can't even see the doors. So going to the right moves me up. Going to the left moves me down. Okay, there's a door here to the right, so if I go down or backwards, or... For forwards towards the screen, however you want to consider it. That will take me to the right on the map, I think. Okay, it did. So, yeah. Navigating is awkward. Oh, there's the positional 3D sound, by the way. Now it's on the left. Now it's on the right. Quite cool. So let's talk about the puzzles. This game does have some puzzles. There's not too many. There's maybe like, uh, I'd estimate around like six to eight puzzles, maybe. Pretty inf pretty infrequent. Some of them are optional. And if you solve them, they just give you, it just gives you items that you can use and, and stuff like that. And collectibles and whatnot. When I say collectibles, by the way, what I mean are butterflies. Because for some reason you can collect butterflies. I, it's kind of weird. I'll just leave it at that. You can collect butterflies. <laughs> so if you solve these optional puzzles, you can collect butterflies. Um, however, some of them, of course, you actually need to do. Some of them give you items that you need to progress. So a few of them are optional, but quite a few of them are not. And let's keep moving here. New locale. Where the hell am I now? I don't, I don't even know. Oh, Jesus Christ. They just broke down the door. Maybe let's not move. Maybe I'll just stay in here forever, because otherwise, yeah, I'm dying. Let's take this green tea to heal myself up. <laughs> uh, I actually want to mention what just happened there before I get to the puzzles. So that's an annoying thing that actually happens very frequently, is that when enemies chase after you... So, uh, enemies are chasing you, you get to a door, and then... Chances are, because the enemies were chasing you before you went into the door, they're going to be quite close, if not at, actually at the door that you went through. If you come back into the room, they're still going to be there, right at the door. And they instantly attack you before you have a chance to react at all. Which can lead to some very annoying situations. Like that one, where you just walk into a room and suddenly it's like, Oh great, I just got stabbed twice and I had literally no chance to react. Thank you. It's kind of silly. There's really no way to avoid that. It's, it's just... It's kind of annoying. Okay, on to the puzzles. This actually is one of the optional puzzles here. I've already solved it, so I can't uh, open it, but it involves setting this clock to the correct time. So, the puzzles are... Uh, they're not very good. There's not too many of them. But... 
they're of multiple types. So one type of puzzle that comes up a couple times is the trial and error type. This happened in, I believe it was two cases. One is a sort of power circuit breaker type of puzzle where you need to get the power on and you have to turn the circuit breakers on in just the right way. And another one was a piano, play the right music, uh, play the right keys on the piano sort of a puzzle. And both of them were trial and error. The kind where you need to do a series of steps and you need to do them in the correct order or the whole thing resets. For example, like the piano one, you play, you have to play, uh, you have to select from three different notes and you have to play them in the right order. And if you ever play a note that is incorrect, the piano just makes like, like a you messed up the song sort of sound. So you have to play one note and if it's the right one, great. And then you play like another note if that's the wrong one, then you play the first note correctly again. And then you try a different second note. If that doesn't work, you play the first note right. And then you play, play a different second note and then that one works. So then you go into note number three and it's that sort of trial and error. Like just flip back and forth until you get all of the steps correct. So a couple of the puzzles are of that type, which are really dull. I mean, that's just, it's not almost not even a puzzle. It's just, it's literally trial and error. You just have to mess with it until you get the correct order. And that's it. Like the circuit breaker, you have to flip the circuit breakers in the right way or the whole thing trips and resets. Not too interesting. And there's a couple others that are more of the riddle type of puzzle. You need to figure out which way to flip some photos or... Um, there's some other stuff, I don't want to spoil it. And those... Well, they range from... Just... Not really making a whole hell of a lot of sense, to... Actually kind of making sense. Only one of them, actually. I think <laughs> I think only one of them actually kind of made sense. It involved something that I had to uh, Google. Not the solution, but just because it involved a real-world concept that I had to look up because I, I wasn't familiar with it. That one was fine, but quite a few of the other ones really don't make a whole lot of sense. I, I couldn't find what the hell you were supposed to do. I ended up looking up a walkthrough to solve them, and even after getting the solution, I was trying to think back on the things I had seen in the world and anything that could even possibly be construed as a clue, and I couldn't make any connections. Like, I couldn't reverse engineer the puzzles. They just seemed like they didn't make much sense. I didn't understand why I was doing that. Um, Actually, there is one other riddle-type puzzle, sort of... That actually did make sense. So that's some of them. Some of the puzzles are optional. Some of them are trial and error, which is boring as hell, and I really don't like them at all. Um, some don't make a whole lot of sense, and I had to use a walkthrough, and a couple of them actually did make, make sense. Although I can't say that solving them really felt particularly satisfying. So overall, I'm not really too into the puzzles in this game. I don't think they're all that great. They kind of feel mostly pointless, sometimes a bit weird, and sometimes kind of pointless, and that's pretty much it. Now let's talk about the monsters. Uh, you just saw those lovely chaps that went ahead and stabbed me in my abdomen. That was unpleasant. They're... They start out really creepy. Because you're unfamiliar with them. I mean, any sort of a monster that you first encounter is going to be creepy, right? You don't know them, you don't know what they're capable of, you don't know how much they're going to hurt you, you don't know how you can maybe defend yourself, if you even can defend yourself. When the monsters are a mystery is when they're creepy, and early on, of course, that's the case. However, pretty quickly, they become not so creepy. And the reason for that is because they're actually, they're quite frequent. And I feel they're too frequent. They're so frequent to the point that it's really easy to just test their limits and test their abilities and become familiar with what they look like and how they move and how they act that you can really figure out everything that they're capable of and what to do really quickly. And it kind of reduces them to very mechanical creatures that are more tedious than scary. Because you're navigating around in a world that's already quite hard to navigate around in. Solving puzzles, sometimes, that require you to sometimes look at the environment and find clues in it. So when a monster pops up and you know exactly how to act and you know you need to run two rooms away to, you know, make it get off your trail. Well... It doesn't make it really scary, it makes it more tedious. It's like, oh god, another monster, I gotta run away from it. So, that's a pretty unfortunate thing that happened. I wish the monsters stayed scary, but I feel like it maybe just overexposed me to them. There's too many of them that I was able to quickly figure them out and how they work. So I thought that was a bit unfortunate. However, something I will say about the monsters is that later on, you do actually 
have new types of monsters pop up. And it actually changes around the game quite a bit. See, there's a sanity system. There's a health system up here, of course, and there's also the sanity system. Uh, system. Right now I'm calm, and right now my health is fair. And early in the game, the sanity is really not important. It means almost nothing, like there's not really that much in the world to actually ruin your sanity for it to matter much. But later in the world, or later in the game I mean, you actually encounter enemies that don't pose a physical threat to you, they don't attack you. However, they're so horrific that they actually ruin your sanity. And they pop up all the time. And I actually found that to be a very nice twist, because now I was no longer fearing for my physical safety, I was fearing for my mental safety. Which, which required me to play the game a bit differently. For example, sometimes I'd end up uh, just hiding in a corner like this, with my flashlight out, and just staring into the corner to try to regain my sanity before one of those creepy things just kind of, well, creeped up behind me. So it made me think about the, the world differently and I had to interact with it differently, and it really changed up how I interacted with the enemies, if you want to even consider them enemies, since again, they don't actually attack you. They, I suppose, attack your sanity. So early on, monsters are scary. A little bit later on, not so much. They become more annoying. And then later on even more, there's actually some interesting stuff that happens with the monsters. Okay, something else I want to mention that's pretty important, and that's bugs. In my time playing this game, I actually encountered a hell of a lot of bugs. A hell of a lot. Among the things I experienced was the game hanging on exit. Um, the, it also refused to register me pressing the exit button quite a, quite a few times when I entered the menu. In fact, almost every single time I've had to exit this game, for some reason the exit button actually doesn't work and I've had to Alt F4. I don't know why. <coughs> Excuse me there, this is future me speaking from the very end of the review. I actually went to close the game and I had the exact issue I was just talking about. Look at this. I can't close the game. I also had the menu just constantly, every time I pressed escape it would pop up for just like one frame and then disappear. So I just kept trying to open the menu but it wouldn't, it just kept popping up and disappearing so I couldn't do anything with it. That was strange. Um, I had another case where my character actually couldn't move after I'd been interacting in the menu for a bit. I came out of the menu and then I couldn't move my character until I finally opened the map and then closed it and then I and then I could move. Um, I also had doors spontaneously just re-blocking themselves after I had already been through them. Which was weird. Uh, I went through them, they worked fine, I loaded, uh, saved my game, loaded the save, and then when I tried to go back through them, they were re-blocked. And I'm pretty damn sure that's a bug and that they weren't supposed to just spontaneously re-block themselves. And uh, actually because of that bug, I ended up spending 30 minutes just navigating around the hellish maze trying to find my way back to that area. It was incredibly frustrating. So I actually had to sift through the video of my playthrough to find the moment where I had gone through the original door that led me to the place, because at the time there was three doors that led to there. Two of them had been spontaneously reblocked for no good reason. And the third one, which is the original entrance that I had originally gone to that area through, it's not actually marked on the map. At least it wasn't when I was playing through it. It may have been fixed, but it wasn't actually marked on the map, so I had to look through the video to find out where it was. And all in all, I ended up spending 30 minutes bashing my head against the wall until I figured out exactly what was going on. It took me a while to realize the doors had been reblocked. It was very strange and very annoying. I almost loaded a game from like an hour beforehand just replay to replay through a bunch of the game because I thought maybe I was completely screwed and could never get back there. Very frustrating. I've also had the descriptions for inventory items not display properly when I mouse over them. So it can be a little bit buggy there. And I've even had scripted sequences that happened twice when they should have only happened once. They just kind of re-triggered when I re-entered the room, which is a bit weird. So nothing that's prevented me from actually finishing the game, but there's quite a few things that have gone wrong. And the biggest one is definitely the one that wasted 30 minutes of my time because of the spontaneously reblocking doors. That was frustrating. 
so in my experience it was quite buggy. However, I do want to mention that nearly every single day I've played this game, there's actually been a new patch released by the developers to fix it. So the developers are definitely aware that it has problems, and they're definitely on the ball as far as fixing it. They're very active in fixing it, which I really appreciate. Of course, I wish it just didn't have these issues before it was released, but they're doing a damn good job fixing it up. So for the for the bugs, I would say just, you know, beware, maybe check the Steam forums if you can without spoilers and just see maybe what people are saying about bugs and, you know, in like a week or two, maybe see how it's doing as far as the bugs go. In my current experience with the bugs, I would say wait a little while till some more things are fixed. But given the rate of patches, I'm thinking it's probably not going to be long until this game is in a pretty good state. Okay. Another thing I want to mention before I wrap up is this is a very serious game that deals with a lot of very serious subjects. And there's something... There's some strange things that happen throughout the game that kind of hurt my... I suppose you could say my immersion in the world. Because it's a very creepy and dark game, but some of the things that uh, you can do are... A, they feel kind of silly and kind of gamey. Uh, part of that is the puzzles that I previously mentioned. Like the trial and error puzzles feel weird and kind of pointless. Also the fact that you can collect butterflies. Even though the butterflies do have a significance in the game, it's still... F you don't know the significance for most of the game. So it just feels like you're collecting a collectible. And, well, actually you are. I mean, the butterflies are actually just collectibles. So it's a bit weird that you're playing a serious game, but there's collectibles. It, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't match the tone of the game, you know? I think what really exemplified this problem was at the very end... No spoilers, don't worry. But at the very end of the game, it actually presents you with a scorecard. And I mean, literally, it's actually called a scorecard, and it tallies up your score in all sorts of different categories. Like how many butterflies you found, and, you know, how much damage you took, and stuff like that. So you're actually presented with a scorecard at the end of the game. I'm like, this is a serious game, dealing with all sorts of serious issues, and it's dark. And yet, you're literally scoring my playthrough at the end? Like, it felt weird. I wasn't comfortable with the tone of that. Like, it just didn't feel right. It's a little bit strange. But, despite the weirdness with that... Really, ultimately, this game... It's... It's about depression and... Loss and... Dealing with whatever fucked up hand the world deals you. Which... I think most people can... Empathize with. I really like the areas this game went to and what it explored in the story. Like I said, it's it's a very dark game, literally speaking, because it's kind of hard to see. But also more figuratively. I like where the story goes. It's a dark tale. But it's one that I definitely felt invested in. So I'm pretty happy with the story. So yeah, overall, it's... It's a moderately flawed game. The most annoying things would definitely be navigating around and the puzzles. Some other minor stuff. There's quite a few mostly minor bugs and some weird tonal stuff and the monsters are a little bit overexposed. Don't feel as scary as they should be in some areas. But overall, it's a damn good game. It looks good. It's really atmospheric. It sounds good. I like the story. And, yeah, it's a pretty damn good game. So, if you're looking for a dark, creepy horror game in the vein of Lone Survivor, then I think you'll be quite happy with Claire. So, Claire is available on Steam. I will have a link in the description to that. And, thank you for watching.